Hi guys, welcome back. Today I have a tag for you. It's called the 52 Nifty Bookish Cues tag and it was created by Adrian over at Strip Cover Lit. I've written down all 52 questions in my little notebook here, so I'll be looking down from time to time, but a lot of questions, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, number one, what book are you reading right now? Book? Singular? Seriously? Uh, actually, I'm in the middle of two right now. Um, this is the Palliser Novels Volume 2, Phineas Finn by Anthony Trollope. And I'm also in just uh, kind of getting started on volume three of the Palliser novels. This is The Eustace Diamonds. Now you're wondering why am I in the middle of two different books within the same series. That's because uh, Steve Donahue is doing read-alongs for these books. Uh, he started this one in January. I got off to a late start. I'm some 200 pages uh, still to go within this one. And it's like over 700 pages long. And then February started, and I was like, oh, I just got this book. Uh, I happened to find it at a library sale. And he's like, oh, you can go ahead and just set that one aside, jump into this one, which I now have. Um, some characters kind of continue or, or you'll or mention within the various um, novels, but they do tend to stand alone, it seems like. Uh, we read the first one, um, I think it was last year. And um, so, yeah, I've jumped ahead in this one, although I'm also behind uh, with, with the week's reading. Uh, I should be much further along. I'm only on page 112. Uh, I should be well past uh, 191 already, so I've got some catching up to do, but uh, I still am enjoying both of these. I can't wait to kind of finish up with this one as well. Question number two, uh, what was the last thing you highlighted? Um, I think it was just uh, some Shakespeare plays that I read about, uh, not last year, but the year before that. Number three, what do you plan to read next? Uh, that would be uh, The King's General by Daphne du Maurier. Um, I'm participating in the du Maurier Reading Project on Goodreads, hosted by Ange from Beyond the Pages. And every month we're reading another uh, one of her works um, in chronological order of publication. So that's the next one up for uh, February. So I can't wait too long to get into that, although I'm still juggling Trollope. Uh, okay. Um, number four, uh, name a fiction writer, living or dead, with whom you'd grab a drink. I went to a little bit of thought. Uh, I kind of came up with Jasper Ford. He's the creator of the Thursday Next series and several other series. Uh, very quirky mind, really interesting characters. Uh, very humorous stories, uh, for, particularly for the Thursday Next ones. just like to, to have a chat with him. I think it'd be fun. Uh, he's also uh, an avid photographer. His, his work's really, really good. I've seen him on Instagram, too, so uh, I'd like to chat with him about that as well. Uh, number five, one nonfiction writer living or dead with whom you'd like to grab a drink. For that one, I thought uh, probably Bill Bryson. He's a travel writer, also very funny. Uh, some of the stories he tells, and it would just be fun to, to, to chat with him on that. Number six is a poet living or dead with whom you'd like to grab a drink. And for that, I couldn't think of anything. I'm not really that big into poetry that I could name any particular poet that I would want to meet. Uh, number seven, name a booktuber with whom you'd like to meet. Uh, for that, probably Steve Donahue. Um, he's traveled the world. He is full of stories, which if you uh, subscribe to his channel, you get a lot of. And uh, I think it would just be great to, to meet up with him. The next set of questions I'll deal with comparisons. And some of them are kind of funny, so you have to select one or the other. Uh, number eight, uh, Emily Dickinson or Edgar Allan Poe? Definitely Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, that's the inside of my journal here. <laughs> uh, number nine, Hemingway or Fitzgerald? I've never read anything by Fitzgerald. Yes, I've never read The Great Gatsby. I own a copy of it, but for some reason I just am not drawn to reading anything from that time period, um, roaring 20s or whatever. I just, I don't know. I don't know that I'll ever read it. It's there, maybe one day, um, but I would pick Hemingway. Although I've only read The Old Man and the Sea, and I did like that a lot. I have a fair old arm, so I haven't gotten to that yet. Uh, but yeah, definitely Hemingway. Uh, number 10, Jane Austen or Charles Dickens? I've read a couple things from Charles Dickens. I've surprisingly never read anything by Jane Austen. Uh, I have Northanger Abbey. I haven't got around to it. Um, I'm familiar with these various stories. I've seen them uh, in video format, but uh, some kind of film, but I've never actually read any of her books yet. And I do plan on getting to them. I just don't know when. Uh, number 11, Harris or Hitchens. I couldn't care less either way. I haven't read any of them and don't really want to. Number 12, Stephen King or Michael Crichton. Definitely Michael Crichton. Jurassic Park and the Andromeda Strain. So many good, uh, really clever plots and stories. Uh, Stephen King, I, he just, I don't know, couldn't write his way uh, into a phone book. Uh, 13, Brett Easton Ellis or Chuck Palahniuk? Uh, definitely Chuck Palahniuk. Uh, I haven't read anything by Brett Easton Ellis, so I wouldn't say anything negative about him. Um, don't, just not familiar with his work, but I have read several books by Palahniuk. Uh, Love Fight Club. 
uh, Kurt Vonnegut or John Green. Uh, I've only read one by Kurt Vonnegut, which I really enjoyed, which is Slaughterhouse Five. I will go with Kurt Vonnegut. 15, Shakespeare's poems or plays, definitely the plays. Uh, number 16, Adrian Fort or Dalton Gentry. They're basically two sides of the same coin. Hmm. Okay, Adrian, Dalton. Let's see who wins. I guess we'll never know. Uh, number 17, Cormac McCarthy or J.K. Rowling? J.K. Rowling. Uh, 18, Hannibal Lecter or Voldemort? Uh, I'd go more Voldemort. Uh, Hannibal Lecter is just too creepy. Uh, 19, T.C. Boyle or George Saunders? Again, haven't read either one. Um, no opinion. Uh, number 20, good writing or good story? I would choose a good story. Number 21, YA or children's lit? For that, I would go with children's lit, because there's a lot of old childhood favorites and things, um, and classics that I would I would go for. Number 22, do you prefer irony or humor? I prefer humor. 23, sci-fi or horror? This one was kind of tough, because I love both. Uh, but my roots will always go back to sci-fi. 24, fantasy or nonfiction? This will be a surprise. Nonfiction. Uh, I'm not too big on the epic fantasies. I have read some several ones in the past. Um, I just am not drawn to them anymore. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go with nonfiction. And I have read a lot of nonfiction, surprisingly. Just not recently. Uh, 25. Rather find a new favorite contemporary writer or a new favorite old-time great? Probably new favorite contemporary. It's always nice to expand your horizons and see who was out there. 26. Sonnet or haiku? Um, not very big into poetry, so... Don't really have that much of an opinion. Probably more sonnet, I guess. 27, Sestina or Villanelle. I actually had to look these up. Um, and, uh, yeah. Again, poetry. I don't really care. As long as it rhymes, I'm good. <laughs> uh, 28, spend the evening in the library or a bookstore. I would choose a bookstore. That way you don't have to be all quiet. And, you know. Uh, yeah, I just like a bookstore better. Uh, 29 magazine or Wikipedia article. I go Wikipedia article. Uh, there's just so many links and you could just keep falling down that rabbit hole. 30 dictionary or encyclopedia. Encyclopedia, pretty much same reason. Uh, 31, uh, the writer I would like to write my biography. Hmm. Uh, probably Jasper Ford. <laughs> See what he comes up with. Uh, 32, I do or do not highlight in my books. Uh, rarely, I've, I think the only ones I've really highlighted in were any of these Shakespeare plays. 33, I do or do not write in my books. I never used to uh, until probably the past couple of years, and now I, I do write in them quite often. 34, earliest memory of a library? Um, nothing really specific other than just the interior. I have a vision of the interior, and it was my neighborhood library, the first of... It's three locations. It has moved, yes, three times and expanded. Uh, but the original one, which was just in a strip mall, small little one there, I remember riding my bike up there myself and uh, just having access to all those books. And I just kind of can picture the interior of it. Uh, yeah, not super cozy. Um, more like a shop front in a way, but uh, I st it still was like my first library. 35, last time you went to the library? I think maybe, was it last week? Or the week before it was a library sale? 36, have you ever stolen, accidentally stolen books from the library? Siri, what's the statute of limitations for library theft? Here's what I found on the web for what's the statute of limitations for library theft. Hmm. Question 37, ballpark, how many books do you own? Ah, uh, in ballpark, uh, possibly six to seven hundred? Uh, 38, how many books do you think would make a reasonable personal library? Maybe about 1,500. Uh, 39, so there's Sense and Sensibility in Sea Monsters and Pride and Prejudice in Zombies, etc. Uh, how do you feel about the phenomenon? I remember when uh, I was working at Barnes & Noble and receiving, and the first time I pulled out this book, Pride and Prejudice in Zombies, and seeing that cover, I laughed my head off, and I had to run around the store and show everybody. It was, it was great. Uh, I ended up reading that, so... Sort of read Jane Austen, um, but and I've seen the movie version of it too. Uh, but uh, it, you know, after a while, it's just like, okay enough already because more and more and more came out. Uh, I just read the first one, but I didn't have any desire to read anymore. Uh, fun while it lasted, I guess. 
40. Horror trope you would like to see get more love. I know the one I would like to see less love would be the slasher type horror, like Saw, the movie Saw, um, and theme it in a book format version of that kind of thing. I prefer more the ghostly, creepy, atmosphere, setting, Victorian, gothic kind of um, setting to it. So I'd like to see that get a little bit more love. 41, something that you think gets uh, underutilized in sci-fi? I really couldn't think of anything. I'm pretty satisfied. 42, flash fiction, a form of literature or just short, short story? Um, I'm not really familiar with flash fiction. I haven't really read any. Um, if it's that short, it's probably just not worth reading. Uh, 43, if you could own one book from all of history, what would it be? Um, I don't know of any particular book that I would want to own. Okay, future Sue popping in here. Um, the movie with Nicolas Cage, I think it was called National Treasure. They mention a book that apparently the President of the United States has that has all this secret information, sort of like about Area 51 and all that stuff. If that book exists, that's the book I want to own. 44. Audiobooks, same as reading? Question um, mark. It is a different form of reading. Is it still reading? I think yes. Uh, you're still absorbing the book. I think it actually takes you in a way more concentration to stay in an audiobook because your mind can wander as you're just sort of, you know, just being just piped into your ears. Uh, when you're in a book, you're obviously invested in it. You're holding it. You're having to consciously read the text. But in an audiobook, uh, you have to kind of concentrate to stay in there. So yeah, I do believe it is reading, uh, just a different form of it. 45. Most literary songwriter of your lifetime? Uh, definitely not Bob Dylan. Um, I don't know. I don't have an answer for this one. <laughs> Uh, number 46, what writer embarrasses you the most because you haven't read them? That would be Jane Austen. Uh, 47, what writer embarrasses you because you've read too much from them? Uh, none. Uh, I'm perfectly content with um, what I read and I'm not embarrassed by anything I have read. 48, uh, what is a biography you're looking forward to reading? Um, that one's one I just came across and that is um, Born to be Posthumous, The Eccentric Genius and Mysterious Life of Edward Gorey. Um, I don't think it's available just yet, uh, but it is coming out very, very soon, at least in the States. Uh, if you're not familiar with Edward Gorey, he is an illustrator of many books, many book covers. Uh, his works are all collected in like four omnibuses called Amphigory, Amphigory 2, Amphigory Also, and I forget what the fourth one was called. Oh well, whatever. But that's like give you an idea of what some of his works like. Uh, it's kind of gothic looking, a little creepy. This is the, um... Gashly Crumb Tinies, and there's another one, The Doubtful Guest. If you're a fan of uh, PBS Mystery, uh, the opening sequel is uh, all of his illustrations. He's very known for his crosshatch uh, illustrations. Uh, but yeah, I would really love to read that. It sounds fascinating. Okay, number 49. Do you have a dream reading cubby? I do not have one. I dream of having one. Um, something with just really cozy, comfy couches and chairs, a fireplace wall-to-wall -wall, uh, bookshelves, um, nice carpeted rugs, and kind of old wood look to it, uh, you know, wood, wood, dark wooden shelves. Yeah, something along that lines. Definitely gonna have a fireplace. Uh, number 50, last literary phenomenon that really got your gears grinding? Uh, I don't know. Um, following along with uh, Steve Donahue's channel and, and his uh, grinding his gears about the whole use of overuse of girl in the title. I would have to agree with that one. Also, um, book covers with um, people's heads cut off. What is it with that? Uh, that just, that, that needs to end. Um, <laughs> it's also funny, um, Adam at Memento Mori going on about all the flowery covers on all books that have nothing to pertain to the story within. That one as well. I have to agree with all three of those. 51, what was the last piece of literature that changed the way you read, or uh, read rather? Um, I don't, I haven't changed the way I read, so I would have to say nothing for that one. And 52, what booktuber have you been watching the most recently? That would have to be the, the guys at Strip Cover Lit, Adrian and Dalton, uh, Dalton Gentry. Um, just because they're putting up a video every day, uh, and they just have some really, really great content. I love their variety hour, like they're now vlogging um, their trips on the road where they constantly get lost, um, and just the way they uh, really analyze um, in their book reviews uh, are just really great. So if you haven't watched them, definitely watch them. 
So I'm going to tag a couple people here. Um, got a list. Uh, I'm going to tag One Book, One Review, Hungry Bookworm, Mel's Bookland Adventures, Retired Book Nerd, Graham Quigley, uh, Kazan at Always Doing, Bookie Laura, The Dyslexic Reader, and Beyond the Pages. And if you're watching this and you haven't done it and no one's tagged you, consider yourself tagged. I will hopefully try to put the um, questions down below. And if I'm too lazy, I'll just put a link to Adrian's channel and uh, you can get the questions down from below uh, in, the com uh, in the description channel uh, from his channel. That made no sense. I'm tired. Too many questions. I gotta go. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.